Hello and welcome to the latest update from the Baha'i International Community regarding the situation of the Baha'is in Iran. My name is Salim Vayankor. And I'm Simin Fahandej. And today we're here to tell you about uh, really an extraordinary, unprecedented piece of news uh, regarding the issuing of a joint statement by 18 United Nations experts, special investigators or special rapporteurs, who have uh, unitedly rebuked and condemned the Iranian government for their treatment of the Baha'is in Iran, their persecution of the Baha'i community, and in particular for the persecution of Baha'i women in Iran. Alim, as you said, this is extraordinary and it's huge to have 18 special rapporteurs and senior experts at the UN make jointly a statement on the situation of Baha'i women uh, in Iran. For those of you who may not be familiar with what special rapporteurs mean or, uh, or UN experts mean, special rapporteurs are essentially investigators, UN investigators that are appointed by the United Nations to investigate a host of different issues, uh, human rights crimes on different areas. So you can have a special rapporteur, for example, on the freedom of expression. You can have a special rapporteur on the freedom of religion, on torture, on violence against women. So here we have 18 special rapporteurs that are looking at human rights violations in different areas who have made this joint statement. And really it, it's unprecedented. It's the first time that this high number of special rapporteurs, UN special rapporteurs, are making such a statement on any minority uh, in Iran. And it might be interesting actually to read some of their own words so that uh, the, the, the gravity yeah. of, their, of their remarks is understood. So they say that we express serious concern at what appears to be an increase in systematic targeting of Iranian women belonging to the Baha'i religious minority throughout the country. So they say including through arrests, summoning of inter for interrogation, enforced disappearance, raids on homes, confiscation of personal belongings, limitations on their freedom of movement, as well as prolonged consecutive deprivations of liberty. So that's a, a huge range of human rights violations right there. Yeah, and what might be interesting for viewers to know is that uh, the UN actually gives a chance to the perpetrator, the, to the country that has perpetrated the crimes, to actually respond to these cases of violations. So in this case, these special rapporteurs wrote a letter to Iran and listed all of these human rights violations and asked Iran to respond to these so-called allegations. And guess what? Iran did not respond. So within 60 days uh, of sending that letter to Iran, which it didn't respond to, within 60 days, then they made this letter public. And one of the other reasons that this, this joint statement is so significant is that it really shows that the Iranian government can no longer hide behind its hate propaganda and lies essentially against the Baha'i community that has tried to do over the past 45 years since the revolution in 1979. I mean, we've had, as you know, former foreign ministers in Iran, Javad Zarif, who in an interview, he said that there is no Baha'i in prison in Iran. Now you have this letter and so many other documents in support of the Baha'is that have specifically said that the Baha'i community, Baha'is are imprisoned, arrested only for their beliefs. And really what this uh, joint statement shows is that the Baha'i community is persecuted for one reason and one reason alone, and that is their faith. And I think the fact that the Iranian government didn't send any reply in the 60 yeah. days that the UN experts uh, gave it, shows that they have nothing to say, that they have no reply, and shows the transparency of their actions and also their animus against the Baha'i community, as you say, because of the faith of the Baha'i community, the Baha'is, and for that reason alone. It's also interesting to look at the recommendations that the UN experts put forward to, uh, to the Iranian government for how they could uh, address this situation. The, the, there are nine recommendations. I won't go through all of them here, but they're on our social media channels, Baha'i BIC, on uh, X and on Instagram. And these recommendations include investigating missing persons cases, ensuring fair trials for any Baha'i that's uh, charged with a crime, explaining why Baha'is were arrested in the first place, giving updates on their well-being and their whereabouts, and, uh, and many other measures like that. But uh, unfortunately, none of these things are happening for the Baha'i community in Iran right now. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that actually this letter really highlights and that is so important that uh, I think we should mention here uh, is this idea of intersectional persecution. So a lot of times we hear about persecution of women or discrimination against women in Iran or all over the world. By the way, we know that there are human rights violations happening in so many countries against so many different kinds of people and groups. Baha'i women are not only facing discrimination as women, just like all other women in Iran, but they're also facing discrimination as 
Baha'is. And by the way, for those who don't know, Baha'is are discriminated in almost every aspect of their lives from the moment they are born and even after death with burials and cemetery destruction, etc. Baha'i women are facing these intersectional persecutions. And so this is what this letter really tries to focus on. And what's really important is that actually when you target a, a woman in a society, you actually target entire families. You tear away children from their mothers when you arrest uh, a mom. Since the uprisings in Iran in 2022, the number of Baha'i women that have been targeted, the number of women in general in Iran have been targeted has increased, but also as this UN statement and other UN documents have said, the number of Baha'i women that have been targeted has increased, which has affected many, many families in the country. In fact, two thirds of all the Baha'is who are experiencing some measure of persecution in the country, whether it's uh, arbitrary detentions and, and unjust trials or deprivation of, uh, uh, of the right to yeah. higher education, deprivation of the right to livelihood, so many of these different experiences, two thirds of these people are, are women. And as you say, when Baha'i women are attacked, entire families feel the pain of this injustice. So one case that we thought we'd highlight is the sentencing of 10 Baha'i women in the city of yeah. Esfahan who were sentenced to either five or 10 years in prison apiece. So it's a combined total of 90 years in jail for these 10 women, it's extraordinary. But the reality underneath these, these uh, bogus charges is that some of them were running yoga classes, some of them were running literacy classes in English or in Persian for Iranian children, also for Afghan children who are another member of a marginalized group in Iran. So how the Iranian government justifies these sentences for these uh, not only innocuous, but actually beneficial educational activities and community service activities is beyond understanding. I mean, we've had cases where uh, someone was arrested for helping underprivileged children and you just think, OK, everyone else in the world that is rewarded, that is encouraged. And exactly uh, as you said, these 10 women that were sentenced, but even just the past few weeks, I mean, as you know, we have dozens of cases of persecution each week against the Baha'i community. And just last week, one of the cases that we had is that both the parents of a two-year-old child were arrested in front of his eyes, the two-year-old's eyes. And I just imagine you're just sitting at home and you're playing with your child, you're watching TV, you're having dinner, and a group of guards attack your house, they raid your house. They literally, when I say raid, it's literally a raid, and they take away your phone, your books, everything that they can find, and then they arrest you. When you ask them, why are you arresting me? They say, it's because of your faith. Imagine, it's because of your beliefs. Um, and imagine also the impact that, that that has on that child, on that two-year-old child for the rest of his life. So worth saying that um, while there's been awareness of the situation of the Baha'is in Iran for many decades, uh, in the past few months and years, we've seen a, a lot more focus uh, on this. So. In 2022, there was a UN fact-finding mission established to investigate human rights violations in the context of the uprising, the upheaval that was happening in, in Iran. And that fact-finding mission in its reports uh, determined that the Baha'is, who were unfairly accused of all kinds of things to do with the uprising, the upheaval, were the most persecuted religious minority in the country. And then uh, a few months before that report, just in April of this year, the organization Human Rights Watch issued a report looking at 45 years of persecution of the Baha'is. This is a report titled The Boot on My Neck, and mm -hmm. uh, it found that the Iranian government was liable for the charge uh, of the uh, crime against humanity of persecution. Yeah, and maybe just to end here with talking about the new Iranian president, uh, Dr. Masoud Pazishkian. He started his term just a couple of months ago with the words and promises, equality for all. And here, we are here to say that we hope that this promise is extended to also the Baha'i community. Baha'is who have essentially experienced every gross human rights violation imaginable since 1979. And we hope that this is extended to the Baha'is because they deserve to live in a country as equal citizens. Until next time, unfortunately. Thank you.